All right, we're live. You ready to light this candle? I'm so ready. Are you ready to start? Yep. Are you a re red electroid or are you a black red a black electroid? I'm a black electroid. Okay, that's good. That's important. <laughs> All right, we gotta make sure. Uh oh, let's let's run this one more time. I I screwed up on the uh, oh. on the opening on the opening credit, so we have to like keep talking. Oh, keep I going. see. Keep going. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay, is it fixed now? It's fixed now. All right. Yeah. There we go. We'll look up there at that camera. We'll see. I, I can't wait to hear what you're going to say about this movie. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, greetings, imagination connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your viceroy of verisimilitude, your master of fun and wonder, your duke of dope discourse, your archbishop of Banterbury, your existential Mr. Rogers, and I am here with my co-host... Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell. And this show is what? Elizaviews. Elizaviews whining, whining about, about movies, movies, where we drink wine and we talk about movies with you. And boy, do we have a good one tonight. But first, first, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the wine. Why don't you tell the people at home what wine this is? Well, we have a French wine today. And? And it is called Sincere. It's a Sauvignon Blanc. A Sauvignon Blanc. Well, uh, let's let's put that up to the camera so the people at home can see it. There's the label. Another uh, bottle of wine we did in fact buy at Trader Joe's. We brave Trader Joe's. They've I gotta say, uh, Trader Joe's is doing a very good job. They line people up. They let people in the store. It is a delightful shopping experience. And after this coronavirus. Uh, whatever it's going to turn out to be passes, I think they should continue to do that yeah, very specifically cool. at their parking lot as well, because wouldn't that be great? There well, still was no toilet paper though. There well there was still no toilet paper, that's true. There was no toilet paper. But that's <laughs> that's all right. And before uh before we clink our glasses, we are going to toast to this week's film. The 1984 cult favorite, and another movie I like to call a litmus test. Oh. Yeah, I show it to people, and if people don't like this movie, I, I, I don't like them. Kind of like oh. with Nail and I. Oh, but I didn't Oh, love... that's why I wouldn't have told you that. I understand. I understand <laughs> we're going to get into that. Hmm. W.D. Richter's first of two feature films, the famous Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, written by Earl Mac Rauch, and uh, W. D. Richter and Earl Mac Rauch uh, went to the same school. I won't get into those stories yet, but this is one of the great uh, science fiction, rock and roll, adventure thrillers ever made. I think, <laughs> and uh, I can't say enough good things about this movie. But we're not here to hear what I think about this movie. We're here to think about. Well, we're here to well. We're I'll, here to talk I'll, about okay, it. I'll tell you a little bit about it. But so. Had you ever heard of this movie before? Yes, I've heard the name. I didn't know anything about it. You knew nothing about it? Nothing. Not even who's in it? Nope. Now, when I first put it on <clears throat> and uh, we started watching, it has a pretty exciting beginning. Uh, yes. I mean, there's an alien spacecraft and then there's, the, there's a test and something crazy happens. Jeff Goldblum right. and Peter Weller are brain surgeons. Yes. And then they go to a testing site, all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. Well, what did you think about? What are your overall impressions about Buckaroo Banzai? What do you think? <laughs> um, First of all, let's toast yes, to Buckaroo Banzai. We didn't even get to taste To Buckaroo Banzai. Cheers mm -hmm. to Cheers. Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension. Mm. Director W. D. Richter only directed two movies. This Ooh, is the first. That is yummy. This is yummy. It's tangy. It's quite good. Mm -hmm. Quite a good drop. Very nice. So, what did you think of this movie overall? Like, like as you're watching it. What were your what were your impressions? Okay, I thought it was wacky, and um, I loved the aliens. Um, there are two factions of aliens. Two factions. I was a little confused as to the story, but I thought it was so wacky and fun and quotable that I loved it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, what did you think? Th this film, for those of you who don't know, has one of the most amazing casts. Of any movie ever made. And let's just start with one of the bit roles. Who did you recognize from Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad? Oh, that was I, at the beginning of this movie who played an yeah. orderly at a mental institution. I don't I don't know his name. 
You don't know his character's name? No. Mike. Oh, Mike. Oh, you mean like on it, yeah, Better Call yes. Saul? In yeah, Better Call his name Saul. is Mike. Yeah. Mike er- Lerman. Lerman Ta- yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mike, Jonathan Banks, the great Jonathan Banks has a small part in this movie. That's just one of the many mm-hmm. amazing roles. But I think uh, you probably the, the, the most well-known actor is, of course, and the, the actor that delivers a, a performance for the ages is... <laughs> John Lithgow, who oh plays God. two characters, so Dr. Emilio Lazaro and John <laughs> Warfin, Lord John Warfin, leader of the Red Electroids, yep. right? He was amazing. Amazing. Oh, and so hilarious. And interestingly enough, he speaks with the crazy uh, Italian accent. Yes. And the reason he was able to speak with this Ita- a crazy Italian accent, as we learned, was that he had a tailor. A tailor that had made him many uh, clothes in the past for many performances, who had this crazy Italian accent, and he went at uh, John Lithgow and recorded this Italian guy reading, reading all of his lines script. in the script, and and copied that, and and John Lithgow was so happy that he actually this Italian uh, tailor gets a credit as a dialogue coach in the yeah, end credits of yeah. this movie, so. <laughs> Uh, and this is just the beginning of an amazing cast, starting with Peter Weller, RoboCop himself, himself, in one of his first leading roles. We have Jeff Goldblum. You have Christopher Law- Lloyd playing who? John Big Booty. Oh, Big or, Booty. No, Booty. 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 Big Booty. Big Booty. I mean, this is, you had Rosalind Cash. Oh, my God. From uh, Rosalind Cash. I'm, draw- I'm drawing a blank. I'm, uh, I, I, it's on my tip of my tongue. Ronald Lacey, who played Tote. In uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Ellen Barkin plays Penny Pretty, who I can't even explain why. The twin of Peter Weller's Buckaroo Banzai's dead wife. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just goes on and on. Clancy Brown, the Kurgan from Highlander. And, of course, our favorite screw, the hardest screw who ever walked the corridors of Shawshank Prison. Oh, my God. It just goes on. Dan Hedaya, Vincent Schiavelli. I mean, it just goes on. Carl Lumley. Carl Lumley plays, of course, an alien. Uh, um, uh, John Parker. John Parker. He plays John Parker. Oh, yeah, I yeah. I mean, John this Parker. movie is so good, I can't even begin to tell you about it. So what did you think of the cast of this film? I thought the cast was amazing. I mean, every time someone shows up, you're like, oh, my God, it's that guy. Right, right. It was that guy. And they were so young. I mean, Ronald Lacey <laughs> plays the president of President Widmark. Mm-hmm. Everybody was so young. So I'm, young. And Billy Vera, the rock and roller, Billy Vera plays a character. One of the so anyway, what is this movie about? Tell people the plot of this movie. What is the plot <laughs> okay. of Buck Rubens Eye? So, um, so this should be boy, fun. Where do I even start? So um, in the thirties, when Doctor Emilio okay. Lazaro and right. James Ito, Doctor Hakito, is it Hakito? Hakita? Hakita? Yeah. Doctor Hakita are testing the, the oscillation. oscillation, oscillation. Overthruster, Overthruster. which is going to allow Dr. Lazardo to travel between dimensions, to travel through solid matter. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and what happens? Right. Okay. So he tests it before it's even ready. Yep. Not ready to go. And ends up stuck between two dimensions. Our dimension and the eighth eighth dimension. dimension. And what happens when he's in the eighth dimension? So, uh, John Warfin. Yes. Who is one of the red Lectroids red, yes. of Planet 10 who are at war with the black Lectroids. Right. And the black Lectro- Lectroids have banished the red Lectroids to the eighth dimension. Right. But because of this dimensional incursion, John Warfin. He takes over Emilio Lazardo's brain. And other rec- le- red Lectroids are able to escape into our world because right. of this dimensional incursion. <laughs> yes. And they set up yo-yo dyne propulsion systems. <laughs> or they take it over. One doesn't really know. Yeah. And what then what happens? Say? And then we're... we're, okay. we're... Go then ahead. they put him in a men- mental institution because he's crazy. Um, and then what happens? Well, then it... Well, we meet him and yes, he... He escapes. He kills Jonathan well, Banks. He kills. But Mike. before that happens, before he escapes, though, Buckaroo Banzai test drives that vehicle. His into... mentor, James Ito, yes. Doctor Hakita, 
yeah, so they, they perfected the... Oscillation os over thruster. Right, and so he is testing it and goes into a mountain, into the eighth dimension. Successfully crosses. Yeah, and sees the aliens, and part of an alien gets caught in his vehicle as he comes out. Proof that there's alien life. Proof. Oh, and he gets electrocuted, so he's all like... Rrr. He is, he is. <laughs> and, and then... His group, he has a, a group of rock and roll scientists named the Hong Kong Cavaliers. His entourage. His entourage. <laughs> is, you don't quite really know. They just do everything. Right. And Clancy Brown is kind of uh, the, he run, he's Rawhide. His game's Rawhide. Yes. He runs the whole joint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically what happens is the, um, the Red Electroids are trying to they're going to destroy basically the world, and in doing so, they're going to get back to Planet 10, where they're from, right. overthrow the Black Electroids. Well, that's what they want. That Yes, that yes, that's what they want. Yes. And Buckaroo Banzai and the Hong Kong Cavaliers must stop this nefarious plot. Mm -hmm. They must. And and so tell me... Uh, so, John Warfin, he escapes from the asylum, and... Um, then he, what does he do? He well, like... he goes, he goes to Yo-Yo Dine Propulsion Systems, where you have John Big Boutte, played yes. by the great Christopher <laughs> Lloyd, who's Big basically Booty. running what the 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 whole uh, the the who's doing oversight, and he's basically running this red red electroids, um, uh, plan. But now that John Warfin, Lord John Warfin, comes back, he's going to run the show, and they have they don't like each other. No, they don't. John Warfin and John Big Boutte do not like each other. <laughs> Big Booty. Boutte. <laughs> Booty. Boutte. And so the Hong Kong Cavaliers, led by the love-struck Peter Weller, who meets the great Ellen Barkin, who is so sexy and cute in this movie. Very cute. They meet at a, a, a show that the Hong Kong Cavaliers are playing when right. she tries to accidentally... Well, she tries to kill herself at the show, <laughs> yeah. but then it's mistaken for an attempt on Buckaroo Banzai's life. Right. And she ends up being the twin sister of his, his dead, dead wife. wife. Yeah. And hijinks ensue. Yes. A lot of crazy stuff happens. So, <laughs> what? when you were watching this movie, how did you feel about it as it was unfolding? What did you, did you, did you were you following the... The labyrinthian plot of this film? Yeah, no. I was like, wait, what's happening? Wait, Rob, wait, can you pause it? I don't, wait, what's happening? Which is really, <laughs> how much do I like that when you do that? He hates that. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. But, you know, it was kind of late at night. I was kind of falling asleep. And, and then I would kind of like, oh, realize that I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> I don't know if we should be telling people that that's how we're watching the movies for this show. Oh, whoops. I mean, we need to be awake I was and, awake. And this, this, this movie requires... But I will say this. You were laughing. I was laughing. It's hilarious. You you thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Which, so it, this movie passes my... Laugh while you can, monkey boy. Oh, yeah, see. <laughs> there's a, This is an amazingly quotable movie with amazing dialogue. Yeah. So you were laughing. Because if you weren't... If you didn't think this was funny... It was hilarious. It was. It's hilarious. <laughs> now, what would you... Would you call this movie a action adventure a thriller a science fiction movie a comedy oh it's all of that it's um science fiction comedy action romance all rolled into one all rolled into one now um tell me more about what you thought of the film i mean it's also like a team movie it's like the dirty dozen you've got an incredible the hong kong cavaliers are this great team yeah and and how did you feel about about the cast and i love the cast i the aliens were hilarious. I just and loved it's, you, them. You really like the way that they they keep switching between how the aliens look in human form, yeah, and then how they look in their red lectroid form that was right. done by the Berman Studios. The aliens were done by the Berman Studios, yeah. And uh, and like Carl Lumley does this great thing with his hand <laughs> with his hands all the time. I mean, it's I mean, it was great. How did, so? Do you, you like the aliens? You didn't think they were cheesy because they're supposed to be kind of funny. Well, I mean, it's a silly movie, so I loved that they were cheesy. Okay, so we're, we're that was all part of the charm. Yes, it, I thought it the was cheesiness. All, I thought it was all part of the charm. <laughs> so, um, um, but you know, Peter Weller plays it straight. He like does. He's, he completely plays it straight. Yeah, he does. And and even Jeff Goldblum, who's funny in the uh -huh. role, but he's still there. They're playing it. Yeah. I mean, they're taking this all very seriously. Yes. Very but much. But that's what makes it. That's what makes it so great. Mm -hmm. So tell me more. I mean, I mean, what are what are the things that. Uh, st stuck out for you for this film? What, what are things that you liked about it? Um, 
I mean, it was a lot of action. The action kept moving along, and it was funny and silly and, you know, complex even. Um, yeah, I mean, I found it very charming. It was a very charming movie. Um, and it was interesting. You found out that one of the people that Peter Weller um, patterned Bucker Bonza after was the rocker Adam Ant. Right. Which you thought the way he was dressed. That's right. You were you were fascinated by that. Yeah, that was very. Was cool. Adam Ant your Prince Charming when you were? <laughs> I when you were younger. Never tell. <laughs> um. Uh. So who's your favorite character? Who'd you like the most? Oh well. Uh, John Lithgow. Yeah, totally. I mean, he was so funny, and I and I loved him in th um, Third Rock from the Sun. Um, and so seeing him in this role, he just was, you know, just so hilarious. I mean, he seems to always do aliens. And, well, he was coming off of an Oscar nod for World According to Garp. Oh, so he's this I haven't Oscar. Seen that. One of the things about this movie that was interesting that we learned because if you get this Shout Factory Blu-ray, there's a very fine documentary on it that I think was ported over from the DVD. It's a great documentary, by the way. But you yeah. learn a lot about how uh, W. D. Richter. Um, what was really interesting about this film, unfortunately, was David Beagleman, disgraced studio exec David Beagleman. Uh, this was one of the first films with his new production company, and he was able to get 20th Century Fox to release this movie. And he hated it. <laughs> he didn't understand yeah. this movie. They didn't know how to market this movie. The first test screening of this movie, they bust in a bunch of kids, like elementary school students. To show this movie to them who didn't get it at yeah. all so this film was a complete it was a disaster it was made for about 12 million dollars and it made no money it had a terrible marketing campaign mm -hmm. what's interesting is this dvd cover is way cooler than the terrible key art the terrible yeah i don't know if you saw the terrible key art it was no, terrible I didn't see it. really bad um <clears throat> wd richter the director of this film wrote other movies such as needful things Believe it or not, and he wrote Big Trouble in Little China. John oh, Carpenter's yeah. Big Trouble. I know it's very. It, 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 there's a lot of similarities. <laughs> there's, yes, I can and see there's, that. And there's 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 some kind of, mm -hmm. you know, there's some st the same DNA in there. And W. G. D. Richter actually directed a film. His second feature that he made was a movie we have been talking about on uh, Rob Observations called and on on John Show Late for Dinner, which is a time travel story that doesn't involve. Well, it involves people traveling through time, but they were frozen cryogenically. A wonderful movie mm. that I really love that Peter Berg uh, is actually in as an actor, not as the director. These are the only two films W.D. Richter ever directed, mm. which is unfortunate because I do think this movie is beautifully shot and beautifully directed, actually. It's a lot of fun. It, it is. It's a lot of fun. It's a widescreen film, sumptuous compositions. Mm -hmm. And they really, I think they really stretched their budget yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Well, so what else about this movie struck you? Did you like the character of Buck Rubanzai? Does, does he Was he a heartthrob to you? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call him a heartthrob, but what? he definitely was charming. You didn't? I mean, come on. He was a lead guitarist and, then, and a singer. Yeah. Play the keyboards. He was cool. He was a cool guy. He was the coolest. <laughs> Buck Rubanzai is the coolest. The whole Hong Kong Cavaliers are the coolest. Yeah. Perfect Tommy. And then Tommy. after I learned that like he has his PhD in um, art, art history. history, I was like, oh. And all the cast members said he was the smartest guy on the set. Yeah. So uh, this kind of movie, I mean, I I've made you watch some rather offbeat films. This is the fourth. I promise we're going to change it up. <laughs> These are all sort of litmus test movies. You know, Videodrome. Uh, well, so with Nail and I, I do? Donnie Darko, and and well, I don't know. I'm I'm still finding out. So, but you like this movie? You found it was charming. Um, now, of all four of these movies, these are offbeat films that they're not exactly the kind of movies that you love right away. So, of, right. of the four movies we've watched, Videodrome with Nail and I, Donnie Darko, and uh, Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, which movie is your favorite of those four? Oh, which man. one did you like the best? Oh, that's hard. Is it? I would say I would uh, I would say Donnie Darko. Wow. Okay. And this would be a close second. Close second. And then video drone. 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 And then um, with Neil and I. Wow. Interesting. 
Now, why would you say that? What about this? 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 Why is this second? Why not? Why not first? What did you like? What was? Why was Donnie Darko better than this movie? Only because I mean they're close. Like they're close. Only because Donnie Darko was not goofy. Um, and no, this, it wasn't. This was a little goofy. Now you like whimsy. I do. Did you find this movie whimsical? Very, very whimsical. And um, but yet, yet it's still what I like about this movie is it plays it all straight. Even though I know that's what I love about it. Yeah. The, the it's humorous because they're playing. I mean, it is the aliens well, kind of playing it straight. Although, come on, John Lithgow, he was like over the top. Right, but in the context but it makes, of the that's movie, that's what makes it so like hilarious. Right, he John Lithgow is not. He doesn't realize he's crazy. Right. I mean, I don't think I don't think that John Warfin, he's speaking out through Emilio Lazardo, but he doesn't know Emilio Lazardo is funny speaking. I don't think. I think John Warfin thinks he's <laughs> Lord, like when he's when well, he's doing right. his Mussolini I mean, speech. Well, you're talking about the accent, but like he's just like this over the top kind of guy. Well, yes, he is. But John Warfin takes himself very seriously. <laughs> yes, the, he does. Within the context of the movie. Yeah. You know, when he's railing like Mussolini, that's one of my yeah, favorite. Yeah, that was great when you're like looking up at him. Yeah, he's on the... shot like on the pedestal. Yeah, that was very And it's great funny. because at that moment, that's when John Big Boutet is about to like, he's yeah, trying to, he's, like... he's going to pull the, pull him out. He doesn't Big like booty. him. Boutet. Big booty. Boutet. Boutet. <laughs> uh, so what else can you, what else can you, you know, you've got to offer more insight into the film. Like, how did it make you feel? What about it? What more, what more about it did you like? I mean, I just thought it was funny. I love the quotableness of it. <laughs> it's got a lot of great lines. Yeah. Uh, what's one of the other lines that I latched onto? Um, home is home is where you wear your hat. Home is where you wear. That was a good one, and one of the most famous lines in the movie that I love. Wherever you go, there you there are. There you are. <laughs> I mean that that's true. And then what is about this? Isn't this isn't my planet? What is it? My oh yeah. This is not my planet, monkey boy. <laughs> yeah, this... Or, wait, there's more to it than yeah, that. Yeah, there's more to it than that. It was another monkey boy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is hilarious. That big booty said. Big booty. Big booty. Booty. <laughs> booty, booty, booty. <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, uh, so, now, would you recommend this movie to any of your friends? Like, any of your girlfriends? Do you have any girlfriends? No. Not to be, you know... Not to be binary or not to be sexist. I have a lot of girlfriends. Would um, they dig this? Uh, uh, one of them would. She probably has seen it. She probably has seen yeah, it. Yeah, I'm talking about Julia. She loves all this kind of stuff. I don't know if she's seen this, though. I'm pretty sure she's this seen This is like this. an acquired taste. She's probably watching. Hey, Julia, are you there? Have you seen the the movie? Who knows? I, I, I don't know. Uh, so... Tell me more. What more did you think of the? There must have had more. It must have had more of an impression. I mean, what more can I say about it? I mean, I don't know. Tell me more. This is your thing. It's Eliza views. <laughs> Got to give the Eliza views. Well, what do you think of this movie? Well, I, I, I of course, I adore this film. There's, why? there's the, the, why that? Okay. Why do I adore this movie? I adore this movie because it, it, it does a lot of things at once. First of all, it creates Buck Rubanzai as a character you kind of want to be. He's truly a Renaissance man. Yeah, he really he's a neurosurgeon. Is. Mm -hmm. He's a scientist. He's a pilot. He's a uh, a rock and roller. Yeah. I mean, he's he's, he's he's a really smart guy. He's everything you want to be. Mm -hmm. And and by all accounts, that it, it, Peter Weller had some of that in real life. The cast right. all said that he's like that he guy. He actually was him and there's there's actually a real science fiction plot in here in the sense that you have right. two warring factions of electroids from planet 10 mm -hmm. and and there's real stakes here and earth is kind of caught in the middle of this war this this and and so there's an actual despite all the wacky funny stuff right. there's a real science fiction plot with real stakes and this this it uh, it harks back to the the men on a mission movies like team movies like the Dirty Dozen or the Great Escape or Ice Station Zebra when you have all of this big cast of characters this team that all yeah. they all work together the and the A team right they're like the A team and so the team is really interesting uh, the science fiction elements the idea of passing through matter and going through the eighth dimension <clears throat> and then it's hilarious so mm -hmm. it, it's a comedy 
but it never sacrifices it still plays it all out so you, you it, the the science fiction elements if this movie wasn't funny and you you told a serious version of this where you had a real scientist that had been possessed yeah. by an alien being back in the 30s and you played it completely straight huh. it could still work you think it could still work yeah i mean yeah, if, I if I, like you could have if john sturgis directed a science fiction movie he directed like the great escape and if you had john sturgis directing this movie in the 60s hmm. and you made it like you made it like like um, the invaders I yeah, know, I know you don't like that show, but I loved that show. The Invaders. I love the Invaders. The invaders. Oh. How do I not? Because we talked about it before, and you're like, eh, I, don't know I love the show. Invaders. Oh, Roy well, Thinnis from the '60s. I, love I, that show. I built like four of the Invaders spaceship models. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, come on, we talked about it before. You're like, eh. I don't know if we're talking about the same show. The, the '60s invaders. invaders. Yeah, the '60s. The, with the thumbs and the finger. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. okay. I the I invaders. love the Invaders. He likes the Invaders. Who doesn't like the Invaders? <laughs> I don't understand. Of I got I was... the impression you didn't like the Invaders. I love the Invaders. Really? I have the I have the soundtrack. Then for the we're invaders. on the same page. <laughs> we're on we are on the same page. So, <clears throat> but tell me more about Bucker Bonsai. Well, how, I mean, if you would have had to describe it to Julia. Well, I'm sure Julia has seen it. Yeah, but if you okay, describe it to your mom. If you had to tell this, like, mom, your mom's like, <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, what did you want? What? what did you, did you watch a movie last night? What did you watch? That's not a very good French okay, accent. I don't know what kind of accent that was. Here, have some more wine. <laughs> um, uh, what, um, what, uh... I would tell her it's a wacky alien movie. It's funny. You won't get the story very well, but it's worth watching because you will laugh. And... Well, There's a good ending. It's romantic. Like at the end, they end up together. She's dead, and she and he revives her. He he, he well he does. He brings her back. Yeah. That doesn't mean you can't watch the movie though. Huh, he brings why? her back. No, because you spoiled the end. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. This is. I mean, it's, it came out in 1984. Yeah, come on. It's you've 36 all seen it. years old. Oops. Can 36. We, can years we bleep old. that out? No. <laughs> no. Um, maybe that's not true. Hmm. It could be true. Maybe. maybe you never she know. she does really die. No, I mean, but I think that's, that's also, she gets straight up tortured. She's going to have she like. She gets tortured. She's going to have an alien creature is about to go into her yeah. mouth. Yeah. She's like unconscious when they find her. Oh yeah. Like, that's she's some all, serious she's torture. She's all trussed up. She's being straight yeah, up tortured. Yeah, like they put honey on her arm and then put ants on her. Like, who does that? Red lectroids from the Planet 10. <laughs> That's who does that. Yeah, right? Red Lectroids. Now, why do you... You know, one of the great conceits of this movie is all the Lectroids are named John. Yes, I loved that. I thought that was hilarious. They don't even explain it. It's just They just play it out. John Smallberries. And John Smallberries. John Yaya. And <laughs> John Big Booty. 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 <laughs> Big Booty. But no, it's Booty. <laughs> Come on, now. Um... Uh, now how do, how does this movie now? Do you think they could make a movie like this today? And do you think that, let's say, a young I wish they uh, would. They don't make movies like this today. Although, well, that's even old too. Like Mars Attacks was this hilarious. But that's also based. Mars Attacks was based on a trading card set from the fifties. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, but do you think that like like do you think your daughter Sophie who's sixteen? Do you think people who Who've watched our channel, mm. met Sophie. Do you think Sophie would like this movie, or would it just no, not? No, I don't think she. would Why like do you it. think that is? Why do you think that this movie is? You know, in the documentary, W. D. Richter talks about how people come up to him, and a lot of the actors, people come up to them, and quote right. this movie to them. And sometimes it's younger people, and yeah. and and Tom Berman's wife, or no, it wasn't Tom Berman's wife. Somebody, the one, the woman, I forget who it was, said this is a total stoner movie. She did. She, she did. Said, now, do you think this is a stoner movie? I do. I mean, you get wickedly baked. Yeah. You know, find the totally. dankest nugs you can and just smoke out. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Now, why do you think that is? Why do you think this is a stoner movie? And I, I think it, now that it's legal, I would think people would watch this movie all the time. Because it's funny. And so if you're high and you're watching this, like, it becomes even more funny. It's like... Then it becomes hilarious. I think it's hilarious now. Uh, yes. So, uh, uh, 
to wrap up or 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 what what were your what are your final thoughts about this movie like what do you think what do you take away from this film uh, you know wd richter only made one other movie after this wow. as a director which is really too bad that is too bad it is too bad he, he continued writing mm -hmm. but out in 84 you know he went on he wrote big trouble in little china which came out in 86 and then needful things was i think 93 late he directed late for dinner which is 91 or something what's that about the time tr it's about two two Jablonskis who basically get cryogenically frozen for 30 years and then they come back home that's why they're late for dinner Oh, that's cool. I have the movie. Do it's you a, like it? I, I, it's a lovely movie. It's one. Yeah. You know what would make a great double feature with, with Age of Adeline? Oh, I love Age of Adeline. I know you do. I know. That's uh, a so, great movie. Um, well, anyway, there's people that are talking to us. Cool. So, uh, hang on. Let's let's find out what 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 they're saying about this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, let's see. Actually, you know you know me. <laughs> it's so bad. I gotta put on my glasses. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, Mark C, Mark Chure sends in a super chat and says, just remember, <laughs> no matter where you go, there, there you, you are. are, which is one of the great, <laughs> I love that. <clears throat> um, Anthony Gonzalez sends in a tip and says, number one, I love the Billy Idol lookalike in the band. That's perfect yes. Tommy, man. That's perfect Tommy. Perfect Tommy. Who wants to be Buckaroo Bonsai, but just isn't. And Buckaroo Bonsai, I like the subtle, uh, I like the subtle, um, uh, how Buckaroo Bonds is always kind of putting perfect Tommy in his place. Like when when Penny Pretty, when they meet, right. he's like, give her a microphone. He's like, he's like, why do I have to give her a, yeah, why do I have to give her a microphone? You know? So I, just do it. Yeah. I like that. Uh, and number two, we got to get Elizabeth a Burning Droogs shirt. Hell, I need to get a yes. Burning Droogs. I don't have a Burning Droogs shirt. Why not? I don't know. Do I they have exist? A, they do. I think so. Did somebody the logo's them? cool. What's the logo? It's like a burning bowler hat. You've seen oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've seen the logo. I oh, got to get that. we need to get those. Yeah. Totally. We really do. The Burning Droogs are the team to beat this year in the Schmodown. Yeah. Uh, I think that's great. Okay. Um, Echo Base Network sends in a super chat and said, did not know your daughter was on with you tonight. Ah, uh, you old wow. smoothie. Look at that. Thank you old you. smoothie Echo Base <laughs> Network. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I, see what you, I see what you did there. <laughs> Trying to move in on my Mac. Come on, man. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you take it. <laughs> who am I to Who am I to argue with you? So, like, I mean, this this kind of film, like we were talking about, they don't make these movies. They don't make movies much anymore. Like, oh, no, and this. I love these. These are fun and silly. And why, but why do you think that is? Why do you think Hollywood? You know, the idea of these kinds of movies has kind of gone away. Yeah, there were so many great movies that came out in the 80s, like lots of comedies and even kids comedies that were very like they had secret jokes in them. They don't do stuff like that anymore. Well, I think a lot of it's moved to like TV, Disney Channel, kids movies, Nickelodeon, Disney. Yeah, but like like in a movie like Dennis the Menace, there was so many sexual jokes in there. <laughs> Like, oh well, wow. that's. Are you saying that's what you want your kids to see as a mom? No, but the kids don't get it. It's like whew, over their head. But you would never do that now. Yeah. Never. And lots of eighty movie, eighties 80, movies were like that. Well, that's because we were more mature in the eighties than young people. Young people are about ten years behind us. Yeah. When we were uh, young, people who were sixteen today are basically like eight. Yeah, that's true. You know, they think they're older. Yeah. But they're really not. Yeah. No, I miss those kind of funny quirky kind of movies but this movie didn't make any money so yeah. i mean do you think that was a, a hmm. statement about so see it didn't even work in the 80s <laughs> well it's it's i think a lot of it had to do with they didn't know how to market this movie yeah. they didn't know they didn't know what to do with the film because uh this sort of to me there's a there was a number of films with nail and i is one of them but that was a british film but in america there was a lot of genre pastiche movies mm -hmm. like this that came out around the same. There was something going on in pop culture beginning in like the, the early early to mid '80s, and mm -hmm. other movies I would say that fall along uh, um, follow along the lines of this movie, uh, Repo Man, which I don't oh, think you've I ever seen. seen that. I know Repo Man would be Repo Man was it was set in the L.A. punk scene, mm -hmm. but there's aliens in it <laughs> and so there's again right. it's it's similar repo mad would make i'm sure landmark theaters uh 
uh, had a uh, they've programmed Repo Man and Buckaroo Banzai together. There was even a movie called Voyage of the Rock Aliens. Hmm. I with, don't know that either. With I've Pia Zadora and Craig Sheffer, who uh, I don't know if many people have seen that movie, but um, you know we'll see. What was the movie with that really long fight scene that also? They was... live. Yes, that. They one. live is similar to this too. Was that seventies though? No, they live was nineteen eighty eight. Okay. Nineteen eighty eight. So it's even older than this one. John Carpenter directed They Maybe Live. Younger. And hit the movie, two movies before that, he, uh, um, Big Trouble in Little China was 86, and then They Live was 87, or They Live was 88, and Prince of Darkness was 87. Yeah. They just don't make movies like that anymore. And why is that? Have people lost their sense of humor? Have people yeah. lost their sense of whimsy? Well, I think that the people making the movies have lost their whimsy. I think people in people in general probably would appreciate that but i think the people making the movies are thinking more about making a lot of money i don't know well i mean they, but but don't you think you could make i mean now people are doing you know there's still comedies like Shaun of the dead which you like that was a great movie but that does the same thing it's a comedic but movie when did that come out in the aughts oh okay so that was you know I don't okay, know, 15. So, yeah. So every once in a while we get one of them. And and Ed, Edgar Wright, I mean, he he's made four movies like this cuz he made Shaun of the Dead, he made Hot Fuzz, he made World's I End. I love Hot Fuzz. Right, and World's End and then he made uh, Baby Driver. Oh, I love Baby Driver. I know you love Baby okay. Driver. And it's the same kind of awesome. There's a whimsy to all of those yes, there those is. four movies. So there 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 are movie there are people that are making those kinds right. of movies. Right. And Baby Driver did really well. It didn't do no? really well. It did pretty oh, well. I thought it did. None of those movies, they're not like $200 million grossing films. I mean, people liked Baby Driver. Yeah, I think people did. It's a lot of fun. But it's a little... You, didn't, me, you didn't like not it. Not when I first saw it. <laughs> I had to see it again. But I don't love. I didn't love Baby Driver because it's too... To me, it's... This seemed effortless for what it was doing. Whereas, whereas I love Edgar Wright's movies, but it's like he set out... To make, he's like, I'm going to make this too cool for school movie. Let me just show you how cool I am. And I'm going to make Baby Driver. Uh, and I felt the uh, his other movies like Hot... F I, I know. I know you didn't. You liked it. I, I liked it a lot. But when I saw it, I just felt that it was a little... I thought it was it was too self-consciously trying to show... To be cool. cool. Yeah, to be cool. Yeah. Like, I, do you think this movie was trying to be cool? I think this Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Call this movie cool? What the, this movie's hella cool. What do you mean? I think it's goofy fun. Yeah, but it, it's 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 it, it's goofy fun is in a very cool way. You don't think there's any? Is this a movie only nerds will love? By the way, I should shout out uh, that my good buddies Mike and Denise Akuda. Interestingly enough, after this movie came out, there was a fan club. That was started for this movie, and you could sign uh -huh. up, and the it, the Blue Blaze Irregular. So people that liked Buckaroo Banzai and the Hong Kong Cavaliers in the movie, they had a group of a fan club slash operatives, uh, who who you see in the movie, the little kid, uh, the Blue Blaze Irregulars, and Mike and Denise Akuda, who worked on Star Trek famously, working on For All Mankind mm. now, <clears throat> they put out this newsletter. Oh, right. As if it came from, and I have, I think yeah, I have all of my copies of the, I have my copies and of it those. it was specific to this movie? Yeah. It was, wow. it, was, it was, you know, it was all about the Hong Kong Cavaliers and How what was going How often would that come out? Man, I don't know. I, I, it was one of those things you signed up for and it would just can't come and you're like, who made this? Wow. And Mike and Denise do an, they do an audio commentary on Scream Factory's <laughs> version of this disc, this Blu-ray. <laughs> Um, you know, now that they're choking off, if you live in Europe, uh, if they're choking, they're choking off streaming, um, actually we have to look what at that camera. What do you mean they're choking off streaming? Well, they're, they're, they're choking it by 25%. The quality. The oh, video quality. yeah, I did read that. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. you know what? Not in our house. Well, I've noticed that my phone calls are really weird. Oh, there's all kinds of weirdness happening. Yeah. I'm, I'm convinced, to be honest... I have a theory. I think all of this coronavirus, everything that's going on is just a cover. And they're getting everybody in their houses. They're getting the world to just calm down. And perhaps the black electroids from Planet 10 might be arriving in the next month or two. Oh. 
They don't quite know when it's going to happen, but it's happening. So does that mean the red Lectroids are already here? Well, no, but there could they there could be a clandestine group of aliens already sequestered away here that mm -hmm. have been softening us up. Maybe we were even told to talk about this movie as another effort. I mean, they've been doing a oh. whole disinformation campaign think across we're being the globe. Controlled. No, I think we're being no, not controlled, manipulated, like pushed in different directions. So it looks like it's our own free will. Oh, that's we're helping soften up the population of the Earth to meet our alien overlords. Wow, could happen. I it, you know. I guess it could. Mm. <laughs> you know, um, let's see. There's a there's a little a uh, little. I'll put a snort for me, and then why don't you kill this bottle? This was very good wine. It was very good wine. Uh, I quite enjoyed this wine. We can always uh, cut back to our, our main camera here, and we'll show you. Uh, this is the wine we had. We got it at um, Trader, Joe's. Trader Joe's. They did not have my favorite unexpected cheddar today. They were all out. They've been out for a while. They've been out for a while. I posted a picture on Instagram about my sadness. Here's the problem. We are not morning people. You have to get there right when they open. It's true. It's yeah. true you do. It's true you do. So people like us who stay up late. Well, we stay up late watching things. We just don't get the good stuff anymore. <laughs> well, that depends. You got Buckaroo Bonsai. Right. I mean, food-wise and wine-wise. Well, no. No, we they have good, wine. No, they have tons of wine. Tons of wine. But no toilet paper. <laughs> no, but that's okay. I got, I got 75 long boxes of comics over there, and I'm going to start digging into them. No. You just wet down that old... No, old newsprint. That ink? That ink? That ink's that 30 ink's years gonna old. gonna kill you. No, yeah, it's not exactly. Gonna, it's, it's 30 got, years old. It's, it's not gonna got kill lead you. in it. I am not wiping myself with that. Well, if the, if your daughters take the rest of the toilet paper, who knows? I'll just get a bidet. Yeah, but. You're gonna have to attach one of those bidet things onto our toilet. Come on, man. <laughs> so let's get back to the movies. We're whining about movies now. Yes. So, so you said you're sad that movies like Buck Bonds I don't get made today. Yeah, I would love to see more of those. I love that kind of stuff. Would you say that that like movies like Amelie, which Amelie is different than this, but there's an element of whimsy. Do you yes. think that do you think that somebody who likes Buck Bonds I would like Amelie? Maybe. Maybe, not but not Amelie is yeah. more of a straight up romance. There's something that warms your heart yeah. about Amelie. It's very heartwarming. That's why we bonded. Very heartwarming. Very whimsical, though. Yeah. Mm. Not as comical, I would say. I mean, there's not. It's not so. There's a lot of funny stuff in Amelie. Funny though. stuff, but I think it's a different kind of comedy than. No, it, it is. I mean, it, it is. Obviously, this is much broader. Yeah. I mean, for a science fiction thriller science fiction action adventure satire yeah this is more straight up <laughs> comedy totally so like what what more can you say like what more do does um like what more <laughs> if you if you thought about buckaroo bonsai a year from now what might you say about it um i think i would watch it again because <clears throat> the story is a little confusing I think I would have to watch it again to, although I did read about exactly what was happening, so that helped. Yeah, but that was after the fact. <laughs> that was after, but yeah, I would watch it again. So you, I like that you do homework for the show. I do. You do homework for the show, which is, which is, I think, important. It is very important. So, so uh, again, like these four movies, since let, let's, we should do that. We should, we should start a new thing. So I'm going to show you four Movies that have a tenuous connection. So the four movies I've okay. already shown you were sort of the litmus test movies. And so how did I do? I think you did test? pretty good. I think you did pretty good. Yeah? You, I mean, you, yeah. You I, mean, look, I didn't love one of your favorite movies. Look, I have to tell you, you're an American. You're an American. And even though you have oh, a Serbian a and French second. background. I am less American than you. Yeah, I understand that. But you still grew up. You were born in America. You live in America. I know you have two immigrant parents. But I have to say that what I mean, what I mean to say is, I grew up in a household where we spoke, we didn't speak English at home. We okay. spoke French and we spoke Serbian. I understand that, but what I'm saying is, I think with Nail and I is uniquely British. Okay, yeah, but we—I was right across the channel. 
No, you weren't. You were here. Your well, origins are across the channel. Yeah, but I understand. I mean, from being French, you, you kind of... My grandmother did not like the English, by the way. Your grandmother who's French didn't like the English? <laughs> my French grandmother. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, if it wasn't for the British... But you know what? She would make a bread pudding every Christmas that she learned does, from the did British. Did your grandmother know if it wasn't for Winston Churchill and the British, she would be probably living under a Nazi flag? Yeah, I'm sure she understood How that. How come your mother or grandmother didn't like the British? Well, you know... I don't know. The French and the English have a thing. It's with the French or the frogs. The frogs? Yeah. Because they eat frogs? Well, that's, you know, it's a nickname. Hmm. I've had frog legs. They, cause they capitulate. They like allowed them. the Nazis to walk right up the Champs-Élysées. The mayor of Paris just fucking surrendered. Yeah, because he didn't want his city destroyed. No, I get that. I never understood that until I went to Paris the first time. Yeah. I was like, what is this chump? Yeah, no. I get it. I, when yeah. I went to Paris for the first time, I was like, okay, I'm, I was just trying to goad you into getting a response. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have been doing that. But yeah. I, I, yes, until the first time I went to Paris, I was I was in awe. Yeah, nobody should destroy that city. No, I understood. If I was the mayor of Paris, I'd be like, yo, no artillery, dudes. <laughs> All right, it's cool. Just, yeah. just chill out. You yeah. know, I get it. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> I think we're getting a little off topic. Yeah, we are. So what are we going to watch next? Uh, I don't know. Well, we got to talk more about this movie. I don't know. We're gonna have to change it up. Why don't you pick? Like, like, give me another topic. I get to pick. No, you don't get to pick the movie. Come on, man. No, I've already given you. I've already <clears throat> given you a kind of a, um, kind of a uh, a reason why I picked these four films. But maybe there's some other like another kind. Of, like, what if we look back into movies from the 1940s, or romances, or is there a genre of movie you would like to approach? And I would pick films that you perhaps didn't necessarily know about or would want to dive into. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, you're the one choosing the movies. So. Well, yeah, but you got to tell me, like, if you're going to pick a genre or something, you let's take another journey into a certain kind of film. What 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 kind of movie would you like to perhaps at uh, attack next? Uh, foreign films, French movies, maybe. Oh, I'm really into foreign films. Well, okay. I've probably seen most of what you would show me. Oh, really? Maybe. Oh, really? At least the French films. Yeah, okay, well, I would stay away from the French you films. You probably haven't seen some of the French films that I've seen. Probably. Or I don't know about so that. So maybe I could pick some French films. No. What about Italian neorealist <laughs> movies? No. What if we rocked an Antonioni movie? You've shown me some of those. I haven't shown you the Ennui trilogy. I'm just saying, I mean, you want to see, is foreign films next up there? I don't know. What, and it, it, when you say you... foreign films, it's like worldwide. What if we went and delved into Korean cinema? Oh, well, I liked the Train to Busan. Train to Busan, but that was, not only was that Korean, that was a zombie film, so it was a Korean horror movie. Yeah, that but was. But what if we looked into like a, well, like, you know, we could look into different things. I've. It was a great police procedural well, Korean well, film, I, I love. I don't know, I mean. Directed by the Academy <clears throat> Award winning Bong Joon Ho. We could watch Memories of Murder. Yeah, I don't know. Should we go down that road of foreign films? What do you guys think? I don't know. What do you guys want us? What do you guys want us to talk about? Don't ask them. Why We're not? supposed to surprise them. Well, I mean, they might have thoughts about what we should watch. No, 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 no. We can't allow other people to dictate this show. This is going to be. Well, but they're watching. Well, they are watching, but, you know, they can give us... The whole point is that they want us to bring the movies to them. Okay, well, let's pick movies that most people would oh, you don't think have a, access to. You don't think that Adventures of... You can have access to every movie now. You don't think Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai was something that we weren't bringing to our audience? Well, sure, but we're talking foreign films now, like... Well, if that's what we're going to do. We haven't decided yet. I don't know. That's, like, far-reaching. Is it, though? Is it far-reaching? Do you guys want to talk about foreign films? Yeah, but when you say foreign films, that's every other film that was made around the world aside from the United States. Why don't we watch a Bollywood movie, an Indian musical? That would be interesting. Or an Indian science fiction musical. Does that exist? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, I mean, I think that would actually be pretty interesting. Yeah. Can we eat curry while we watch it? I love As long curry. as we have toilet paper. I love Indian food. As long as there's toilet paper. 
Oh, that might be a problem. Well, I'm just, you know, in this day and age, <laughs> who knows? <clears throat> Perhaps not. No, we could delve into that. But, I mean, more about, uh, it, 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 it's like, I think I've shown you four what I would call these, not just their cult movies, you know. They're cult movies that you showed me. And I like that. Yeah, you like, and you hadn't seen any of them. So that's good. And they were right. all very diverse cult movies. They were. Yes. You know, psychological thrillers mm -hmm. and... And this is a sci-fi comedy. Oh, uh, Throg Never Dies. That's pretty funny. Emmanuel series. What's that? <laughs> uh, well, okay. Uh, the Emmanuel series, dude, first of all, if you want to talk Emmanuel, there's actually three original Emmanuel movies starring Sylvia Crystal. You've got Emmanuel, Emmanuel 2, and Emmanuel 3. These are a soft core directed by just jockin they're not just jockin just it's probably yes i can't pronounce his name but it's just jockin i i'm my favorite emmanuel movies emmanuel 2 actually emmanuel oh, 3 was two. a little disappointing but then uh a laura gemsher there's been a ton of emmanuel movies that were spun off from the originals but the originals i have the emmanuel box set do you? I'm I not do. surprised. I have the Emmanuel box set. <laughs> I do. I do have we the... want to go down that road? Well, you know, he also did the mean, band. Just Jockin directed uh, uh, um, The Perils of Gwendolyn in the Land of the Yik Yak. That's my middle name. With Tawny Katane. Okay. We could do that. But Is I, that I, softcore I, too? I, uh, well, it's an action. It's, it's Indiana Jones with sexuality, sort of. <laughs> kind of. It's, I mean, it's not great. We could do that. Throg never dies, you know. That's not a bad. That's not a bad idea. I mean, it could, but I I don't know if we get into that, then people are gonna be like. Yeah, hmm. some people will be turned off. Yeah, we don't we don't. Although that's something we could delve into the erotic thriller. I could go down that road. I mean, Emmanuel's just straight up softcore porn, but it was. Is porn... there a story? Oh yeah. Is no, it a good story. story? It's also beautifully photographed. Is it a good story? It is good. I mean, the first two Emmanuel movies are, are, are good, actually. I like the first two Emmanuel movies. You know, they, they represent another period of time. I mean, not pe people didn't want to go down the hardcore route, so they went. I mean, it was, it, was, it was gussied up with beautiful cinematography and all that. But, you know, the Emmanuel movies, I think what... What, what was that Korean movie that was kind of... Where she has to have sex with the... Oh, The Handmaiden. Movie? So good. We'll tell them. The Handmaiden, the Handmaiden is, is so good. So good. Yeah, I, I which I have that on Blu-ray. Is that considered soft? soft I wouldn't soft? call. I would say uh, no. I, there I was some pretty steamy sex. No, there's steamy, but I wouldn't say that was necessarily soft core. I would say that if a movie is considered like a soft core movie, that the the sex is the raison d'être. How do you pronounce that? Uh, of the film. Oh, so that's the, the main. The Handmaiden is a revenge tale. Oh my God, that's that's it's, such a good uh, you movie. Know, it's, I would say that's a, a straight and there's up. There's really good sex in it. <laughs> there is really good sex. So really Not good... with the octopus. That's well, that's hentai. We could do that. We could do our favorite hentai movies, but no, we shouldn't. I know. Those are animated. Oh uh, yeah, no. So. <laughs> mm. Well, anyway, so anything more about Bucker Bonds that you want to say? Is or, I mean. I would say see it. I really like it. That's it. See it. It's funny. It see it. It's funny. <laughs> great aliens. We're supposed to have some scintillating, insightful conversation about well, this I mean, great. We've cult been talking hit. about it for an hour, so. I know, but uh, <clears throat> you know, to wrap up, I mean, I dearly love this movie. I I. I can see why it's a cult classic. Um, it's very funny. It's got a great story. If you can decipher what's going on, I think after watching it a couple times, you could figure it out. Um, and John Lithgow is just brilliant in it. He is brilliant. It's it's really it's, it's a great. It's very quotable. There's lots of stuff that you can like glean from there and say. That's true. So laugh, um, laugh while you can, monkey boy. Laugh while you can, monkey boy. <laughs> uh, what porn is porn? Is that what Throg says? Porn is porn. <laughs> John is John Holmes porn. stand in. I certainly mm. could never be mistaken for John Holmes stand in, let me tell you. I don't know who that is. That's but all right. It's I good that guess. you don't. Johnny Wad. Um, he's a man with a very large uh, unit, a very oh, large penis. I see. Packing like 12 inches. Okay. But, but uh, yeah, porn is porn too, but they're, you know, we've even moved away from that. 
if you talk about 70s porn, there's a lot of really so wait, interesting... is he saying that we should talk about porn? Well, I mean, you could... Uh, there is... We could watch four pornographic films from the 70s yeah. that I would say are... are well, there's but like... I think we should be talking about porn on this show. Yeah, probably not. That takes us to a different Although we, you could show me that. I could show, I could show you that. I could, maybe I could show you that. But no, you're... But, but there are... It would be interesting to delve into some of the porn in the 70s because no there was some interesting i mean there's a post-apocalyptic we can't do a show about porn well i mean probably not because then people would have to watch the movies i would like to stay away from porn yeah but let's not do that there is a possibility um I don't that think you could so. that well, would be we'd have to start a different show about right yeah right. and i don't know if i want to yeah i mean there, an hour I, I, talking about no, we wouldn't. No, 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 we wouldn't. No, no. I mean, that's what Al Goldstein used to do, and yeah, I don't know if we'd do yeah, that. I don't want to be known as the, the porn, porn people. reviewer. Yeah, no. Well, not that there's anything wrong with that, because if you were to go back and look specifically at porn films from the late '60s or softcore Euro soft, we've talked about that before. Could be interesting. Uh, Happy Console Gamer says, <laughs> uh, "Hey Rob, sent you and Elizabeth a video oh. from my wait from my wife and I about Buckaroo Banzai. You did. Oh, where is that? Uh, video? I don't know. I, I haven't got it yet. Uh, uh, it, look, if you did, what I will do is I will play it on Rob observations tomorrow. I, I haven't downloaded it. I'm remiss. Oh bummer. I, I didn't know that. We could have uh, played a video. But Happy Console Gamer, I will app. You know, somebody told me about you. I have to say, look, I don't know." everybody on youtube i can't know every youtuber what? but somebody somebody contacted me a happy console gamer and was completely impressed that you even come to my chats oh. so i want to thank you for for doing so i don't know what that means i i happy console gamer i just assume you're a you are in fact a gamer and if you are i would love to talk to you about how picard is ripping off mass effect 3 but that's a different show but I would love to put on that video of you and your wife. I think that's fantastic. Oh, bummer. I want to see that. I will watch. Well, you will. I'll put, I, whenever somebody sends me a video, I put it on the show. Right. I put it Which, on the show. I watch the shows every day. I'm there. She does. She comes in and she watches I the show. I comment every once in a while. Uh, uh, Wonderland 2001 with Val Kilmer. Yes, you can. Oh, we can watch that. I, I have Wonderland, that. Wonderland is about... I like John Val Holmes. Kilmer, it's about John Holmes. It's Ooh. about the porn star John Holmes and his murder and and what happened to him. Boogie Nights. Well, As we've seen. I've seen Boogie Nights. Yeah, but that's not. A, yeah, but that's different. Yeah, but I've seen it. So isn't this about movies that I haven't seen? Yeah, it's about. Yeah, we can't watch movies that you've seen. Yeah, I've seen that movie. Yeah, I know. Well, but I'm, I haven't seen Wonderland. Yeah, but I wouldn't say Wonderland is great. I see. I, I think Wonderland is what I want to try and do is show you movies that I find that have some kind of cultural significance, either right. genre significance, or 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 you'll you'll become aware of like when we go to Comic Con, and somebody brings it up. Is Comic Con still going to be on? I don't know, man. Oh. I don't know. Uh, if I was given if if, if somebody gave me a, uh, I don't know. Well, we'll just I wait think and see. I think we're on the edge. I think we're on the edge of Comic Con. That's July, so yeah, mid July. We'll see where we go. We'll see. Everyone, stay home so we can have Comic Con. Um. Oh wait, Anthony Gonzalez sent in a tip and says, Kevin Smith tried to do a series based off of Buck Rubens. I he did. There's a holdup in regards to the rights, but I think he's still trying. I've heard about oh. that. Now, what's really interesting is, um. A lot of the time when movies like this get made, the people that are making the movies have to give up their rights to the money people. Hmm. And Earl Max Rout, uh, Earl Max Rouch or Rouch Rouch, who wrote this script and W. D. Richter, they probably did not retain any ownership to the material. They had to give it up to get the money to make the film. So uh and, and i if i remember if memory serves when kevin smith was trying to get the rights he thought they were free and clear and only later did he discover that they weren't i mean i would love to see a uh, buckaroo bonsai film now and bring back the cast even figure out a way to bring clancy brown back from the uh, uh dead and and do it now peter weller is still hilarious 
He's on Cameo. You can get Peter Weller to to make you a video for like 150 bucks. You can pay him. He'll send you a really? minute and a half Cameo video. Yeah. Yeah, what would be really cool, the ultimate Cameo video would be get all of the Hong Kong Cavaliers in one place oh, to get Cameo cool. videos because that would be the dopest shit ever <clears throat> if you could get that done. Yeah, that would I mean, be hard. Yeah. Well, our hour's up. Wow, has it been an hour? It's been an hour. So if you had to rate Buckaroo Bonsai Ooh. one out of four glasses of wine, uh, four being the best, one being the worst, how many glasses of wine, of vino, would you give to Buckaroo Bonsai? Oh, wow. Um, what did I rate Donnie Darko? Three and a half glasses of wine. Ooh, so I would give this three. Buckaroo Bonsai gets three glasses of wine from Elizabeth. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, let's drink to that. Mm. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. I guess. I guess uh, let's fun. let's go to uh, let's go to the next. Let's go to the other camera, Bob or Elizabeth. <laughs> I'm Bob. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary people, and all of you gentle beings across the eighth dimension or wherever else you live. This brings an end to episode four of what? Elizabeth's whining about movies yes and we want to thank you for all of your support uh you can send us letters to the burnettwork.net i will play uh happy console gamers video probably tomorrow if i have it on the to that. Uh, on rob observations the show about something i will be on rob observations tomorrow at one in the afternoon and of course we will be coming at you with elizaview's episode number five with another mysterious movie, a player to be named later, apparently, and we want maybe to he'll let me pick. No, the whole point is I have to show you. It's our dynamic. I have to show you movies. But it'd be great if I could show you movies too. But no, no, no. I mean, it's would it be? I don't know. I think the people want it. Uh oh, hang on a second. Uh, <laughs> I love Throg. Throg, clerking for life, sends in a tip and says, Wonderland has great performance by Val Kilmer and should have been an Oscar nominated. Sad oh. the movie wasn't great. Look, I love Val Kilmer. Yes, so I'm a I. huge Val Kilmer fan. <clears throat> One of my favorite movies of all time, well, not of all time, is, of course, uh, the great um, the great movie from 1985, Real Genius. Oh, I don't know if you've seen that. But what? I loved him in Top Gun. Well, yes. You know, I used to kind of look like him in Top Gun. <laughs> I'm dangerous. Uh, <laughs> I could lose. I could lose weight and look like I look like Val Kilmer now. But I could look like Iceman, Iceman. again. If I went on a weight loss program, we might be. We'll, we'll run out of well, toilet paper think, and food. Yeah, we will since I'm at zero income now. Yeah, I know it's great. Uh, Frog we have says. Wine. Frog says, "Let her pick." Thanks a lot. Yay! Thanks See, a lot. No, we got to look at that camera. They want me to pick. Listen, we want to thank you all for supporting the channel. We want to thank our moderating staff, uh, the great mayor, Mike Bodden. I mean, let me just tell you, as I've been hearing from Mike Bodden, mayors across America are having a rough time of it. Yeah, let I'm me sure. tell you, as you might imagine. Uh, I want to also, just like if I can mention, let's hear it for all the state governors. I think you're all doing a great job. There's yeah. incredible leadership going on at the state level all around the country so congratulations to all you governors not that anybody who's a governor has time to watch this show maybe if, if they did if maybe. they did if they did i want to thank my moderating staff in addition to mike bodden there is of course detective jim boyers there is greg smith there is lewis Yu, and there is Jordy Lyons, and of course i don't know if he's here but the richard the richard is here and if you don't know the richard if you go to the elizaviews whining about movies fan page on facebook or you go to the post geek singularity page on facebook you will meet the richard he will guide you on a magical mystery tour of wonders he sets up watch parties he sets up watch parties uh if you want to watch the movies if you haven't seen the movies we'll announce them the day before and the richard does put on a facebook watch party where you can in fact watch the movies before we talk about them yep you can. Uh, wait a second. Throg sends in another tip and says, <laughs> I could look like Hemsworth, too. <laughs> hey, man. Let's all. Let's all do that. <laughs> you know, I was pretty in my younger days. Not as pretty as oh, you, but I was. Yes, you were very. 
Yeah, very. You still are. Well, babe. thanks, babe. Appreciate it. Come on, babe. I like that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, well, so anyway, everyone, this this brings Elizaviews whining about movies episode number four to an end. I want to thank you for being here with us, and we will be back. We need some pithy catchphrase. We don't we don't have one. Yeah. But um, we'll we'll figure it out. Remember the guiding principle of this channel. If you want to understand where we're both coming from, is Amelie, wouldn't you say? Yes. Amelie. If you watch Amelie and you love Amelie the way we love Amelie, then you're right on our wavelength. You park yep. your shuttlecraft in our shuttle bay. Absolutely. Well, thanks very much and enjoy the rest of your Friday night. And as always, have a better day. Let's take one last swig. What do you say? Cheers, compai, l'chaim. Stay healthy.